I'm Gavilan Steinman, and this is On Shoulders TV. In this episode, we'll be making circuit boards, like this one. Like many things these days, circuit board fabrication starts with the computer. Now there's many kinds of software out there for fabricating circuits, for designing schematics and circuits, but I'm going to focus on Eagle. So let's dive in. Everything starts with a schematic. Now this is a schematic of an opto end stop designed by Zach Hoken. Now this, I won't get into the details of what this board does, but if we look at the schematic, we see that, as an example, R3, which is resistor 3, leads into LED1. Looking at the schematic, things make sense. We see the electric truths, we see the components, and we see how everything comes together. The next step in this process is to convert the schematic to a board design. Now this board is a double-sided board, which means that the paths, the routes that electricity can flow, can be either on the front or the back of the board. So now that you have a schematic and you have a board design, the next step is to actually fabricate this board in the real world. Now you have a few options when fabricating. Now the first option, and the most expensive option, is to have the board made for you. This could cost anywhere between $20 and $40 per board, depending. And that's in low quantities. When you get into high quantities, you're paying, and high quantities, by high quantities I mean around 100 boards, you're going to be paying 50 cents to a dollar per board. So it makes sense when you're mass producing. But to have someone make these boards for you doesn't make sense when you're prototyping or when you're just doing one-offs for research or just for you. The other options kind of fill the void. And these two options are either using chemicals in your own home or using a CNC, a computer numeric control machine, mill, to mill away or drill away the copper and leave the traces that you want. So I chose to make a mill and let's let's take a look at this mill. Now I'm not going to get into the details of the design of this mill and how I made this mill because it's a long story but I do have a blog if you're interested and I may make a video later on of the steps I went through to make it at a more detailed level. But I do want to mention that there is an aluminum bed here, you see, and there's also a spindle. And some of the details around the electronics that run this mill, Zach Hogan designed most of the boards for this mill, and the brain of the machine is an, an Adreno, which is also an open source project. The firmware that sits on the brain is also open source for the RepRap project. I extended this firmware to have functionality specific for this mill. And the host that I'm using, the host is the software that sits on the computer that's next to the machine, it was originally written by Chris Megan and was called RepRap for G-Code. Now I extended this host to include functionality specific to this machine. The host is written in Java and the firmware is written in C++. So let's fire this up and, and see it working. The first thing that we're going to do is glue down this board with super glue. Now this is going to hold the board in place while we mill. And then now we're going to drill reference holes two reference holes and these holes are going to allow us to flip the board later and mill the underside of the board. Now we're going to connect leads for probing. 
and one lead for the actual board, and one lead for the spindle. Now this is going to allow us to measure height information across the surface of the board, specifically around areas where we're going to be milling. And by doing this, the goal is to constantly adjust the z-axis while we're milling so that we don't dig into the board and make the traces too thin and dull the bit, and we also don't leave traces behind and not complete by not milling away all of the copper. Now when we're milling, we're going to take three passes at this milling, and this is going to allow the a greater separation between different traces. And we're going to tap with this bit. And this tapping is going to make sure that when we do start drilling, we're drilling in the right place, because these drill bits are very flimsy. Now it may look like the drilling process is not very automated. And that's not entirely true. The hostware that sits on the computer actually tells me which bit to install at which time, pauses in the right place for me to do so, and guides the whole process. Now, yes, I do have to, it, it's time consuming, I do have to stay by the machine in order to switch out the bits. But for this board, there's only five bits, ranging from 0.7 millimeters to one millimeter. So it's, it's manageable. And this is a one millimeter bit, and I'm going to be using this bit not just for the one millimeter holes, but also these holes, which are three millimeter holes, and these holes, which are three millimeter holes. I will be drilling these out using just a drill later, instead of doing it on my mill. Now that I've done that, I'm going to be scoring the board, and probing before I score so that I make sure that I stay consistent with the top surface of the board instead of the bottom surface. And after probing, then I actually do the scoring. So now the top layer of the board is complete, and it's time to take the board off of the bed. Now this is done with acetone. We glued it down with super glue, and now acetone will melt that super glue and allow us to just pop the board right off. And we do this with a razor blade. So now that we have the board off, there is still residue, super glue residue, on both the board and the bed, so we'll want to use a little bit more acetone to get rid of that residue, and make sure that there's nothing left behind. And now we're going to use 0.9 millimeter drill bits as pins to put in the reference holes to make sure that we line it up correctly. Now this is going to ensure that we know where the top of the or where the bottom of the board is in terms of the top of the board. And this is going to mean make sure that when we drill the top, the top holes line up with the bottom holes. So again, probing, milling, tapping, drilling, and scoring and a little bit of acetone, and the board's off. And we're just going to finish the scores with a razor blade, and we're done. Now here's an example of a part. This is a, an Ethernet port, and we see that it snaps right in, and it fits snugly. This process from start to finish took about two hours. Now I think that's pretty exciting because that means that two hours after designing a board on a computer, you can hold it in your hand. Now this is a full double-sided solution. That's very exciting. And the traces, the resolution, is high enough for surface mount components. Also very exciting. Now I'm calling this website and this series On Shoulders. And it should be pretty obvious why I'm doing that. I've dropped a lot of names so far. But I'd also like to thank Paul Henning Camp for coming up with a concept of probing. He came up with the idea, I just implemented it. And I'd also like to thank the whole RepRap community. I feel you inspired this machine, so thank you. And also I was able to print the motor couplings and the bearings on my RepRap 3D printer.